Good Saturday morning. But these again, this is uh, St. Luke's Gospel, okay? It's the sixth chapter. These are moral sayings. I think what our Lord was, what the Gospel writers were doing, they were compiling sayings, okay? And so they packed them together. Moral sayings, spiritual insights, whatever it may be. And so it's a run on, okay? But each one is a, you know, is a colossally beautiful insight, okay? For whatever it's worth to you, okay? I keep thinking, well, they ever have the Vitali sayings? Good grief. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Let's hope not. Well, we'll see. Jesus said to his disciples, a good tree doesn't bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. So he's saying, a good person, that's, you know, you want a translation in that philosophy? It's Aristotle's theory of virtues. A virtuous person produces good out of virtue, habitually produces a good thing, good relationships, good words, good communion. But a person who has vices produces discord. The things he said before, okay, what I said yesterday, see? That's what he's saying. He's using an example anyone could understand, okay? By your virtues and your vices, you will live. And you, are, you will either bear fruit or you will do the opposite, see? And then he says, and also, you know, don't ask to get the good from the bad. or the. Watch what he says. For people don't pick, fig, pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. See? It's also true. We're drawn only to those who are virtuous. When people are not virtuous, we tend to shun away from them. We don't seek to draw the good from the vicious. There's a lot of truth in that. A good person out of the store of goodness, think of habits of the heart, Aristotle. A good person out of the store of his goodness, of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of the store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. Boy, is he right? As you are, as you, as you, as you, your virtues and your vices will affect, not determine, but will affect how you will be, how you will act. That's why it's so important when we're raising our children that we train them, we train them in virtues from the time they're little. Be nice to your sister, be nice to your brother. Make sure you say goodbye to your grandmother. You're teaching virtues so they become habits of the heart. So that it, you don't have to tell a person that, you know, it's, it's Christmas and again, I have to get your, your friend a gift. You start maybe somebody when they're little, but if a husband has to be reminded to give his wife a gift for her birthday or for Christmas, and I've seen that, that's pathetic. If it wasn't so sad, it would be tragic. Yeah, that's the truth. Because habit of the heart. You should want to give a gift. The loneliest time of my life was when I was stationed in New York, and I remember Christmas. God, you got to be, I told you that before, you got to be in New York for the Christmas. Holy cow. Fifth Avenue, Third Avenue, holy cow. It's, they make movies out of it. And I had nobody to give a gift to. I didn't want to get a gift, I wanted to give one. Well, since then, I've given a lot of gifts. I love giving gifts. Think of a gift as a sacrament of the heart. It's a symbol that makes present the giver. I mean that too. I treasure gifts that people have given me. I treasure them. I, I put a sacred value on, literally sacred value. But I always hope that they would give a sacred value, place a sacred value in the gifts I give because they are gifts of the heart from the heart. You see that? Yeah. Anyway, see, that's a truth. That is a truth. You could look at Christmas and birthdays, but especially Christmas, oh man, I gotta get all these presents. You know, you know, who can afford? You could look at it as an opportunity to share your life in the symbols you chose to exchange. Isn't that neat? If you look at it that way, yeah, trust me. Trust me because in this regard, I was in a position for so many years where I couldn't give a gift because I didn't have a dime in my name in the, the order nor anyone to give a gift to. But once I came out here, all my friends, people, such intimate friendship, closeness, I gave a lot of gifts because I wanted to. It was fun. 
it was exciting. I started buying gifts and I used it. When I was up in Alaska, my friends up there know this, I used to buy gifts all over the place up there and I, for Christmas and I'd ship them home for Christmas. Ship them home and then I'd use my trips in Alaska to buy gifts that I couldn't buy anywhere else. They'd have to be Alaskan, okay? It was a way of making present to people in my life, my family, my friends, those who I love so intimately, so personally, you see? I don't know. I'm just, by, see, by the virtues, you perfect those virtues. Those virtues will lead to wholeness. If you, if you commit yourself to a life of selfishness, you will die alone. I, you know, I heard at one time uh, a woman had died, and it wasn't, I didn't know her at all. I didn't have her funeral or anything. But somebody who knew the family very well, she was an old woman, and he said, There's nobody crying in church. That's a sad story. Nobody's crying. There's nobody crying. You know, the, you know, no tears. There are no tears. See, it's even when death comes as a friend, to use an expression, to relieve from the suffering, there is still the loss. And if you've loved somebody and you've been loved by somebody, their loss is unfillable. It's unfillable. And though it may be the best thing, death came as a friend, they've suffered so much, nonetheless, the loss is absolute. Absolute, but with hope. That's the beauty of Christianity. I have to say that. That though we grieve for those we have loved and been loved by and who have died, we grieve with hope that one day we will walk again together, to use St. Paul's expression, we will walk together again in paradise. You know, somebody asked me what I thought heaven was. I said, to be with my family, my friends, those I have loved and been loved by in paradise. And I said to one of my dear friends, Sarah, there is no paradise without you. I can't imagine it. All in Christ, for sure, obviously. But together, paradise to me and the people I have loved and been loved by in Christ, through Christ and for Christ, forevermore forevermore, and that's dynamic. I stole that word from Alfred North Whitehead, forevermore, not just forever, forevermore and more and more and more. An eternal adventure of love. That's what I think paradise is. That's what I think heaven is. To be together with those we have loved and been loved by, and there's no more tears, no more sorrow, no more grief, no more loss, only the fullness of life, the plethora. In Christ, the great adventure of existence in and with Christ forevermore forevermore, forevermore. And it's the truth. So we, we grieve, but we grieve with hope because our faith bears the fruit. And what that fruit is, is hope. <laughs>